Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at accumulation and distribution zones on Bitcoin, how long might these last and what might happen next. So if you're a fan of Wyckoff and GAN and all the good technical analysts, make sure you stick around on the channel. Subscribe, bell notification icon does go a long way to helping out the channel. Let's get to 200,000 subscribers. Make sure you like the video up as well. Join me on Instagram for daily Q&As, Twitter for crypto, lots going on. And if you want a free trading and investing newsletter, link to that is down below. Just drop your email address, hit notify me once every two weeks. Tons of good stuff in that email. Let's check out the charts. Okay, so I've got Bitcoin. We are looking at a weekly chart because we just want to look at accumulation and distribution zones. Now, I'm not specifically using a Wyckoff schematic. That's because we tend to gravitate towards those schematics and then try to see something in the chart that's not necessarily there. So when we use things like fractals, then we believe that they have to happen. So we use something like this, we see that and we go, what would happen if that looked like that again? And then that can skew what it is that we might actually be seeing in the chart and it leads us to some sort of false, uh, f false reading at the end of the day. So all I'm doing here is looking at areas that the market looks like it has gone through some sort of accumulation and distribution and then what's happened from that point. So I just got to figure out how we're measuring those. First thing I'm looking at is I want to see some sort of big stopping volume. So that's a Wyckoff uh, rule, Wyckoff term. It looks at stopping volume, things like market dropping really hard and then getting held up by some volume. So I've got one little range up here and we're going to try and look at this range and see what might be coming next. The other thing I want to see is volume drying up. If you've been following the channel for some while, you know that I always look at volume. Volume is the lifeblood of the market. If there is no volume, there is no blood going through it, the thing is dead. We want some blood going into the market. So we're going back and just having a look at this. And you can be a new investor, new trader, whatever it is that you do in the market. It's going to, it's going to be very easy for you to see it once you give it some time. So make sure you stick with it. Now is a great time to be doing that because the markets are very quiet, fantastic times to be learning more. Uh, what we're, what I'm looking for here then is, you can see, got the big bar down, then you get big volume and then see what happens to the market after that. Just peters out. The volume just dries up, dries up, then we get a move. All right, so I want to measure these zones here. We've got a big uh, round of volume going into this basically stopped the market, a lot of selling came in and we tried to keep creeping up but the volume started to dry up from it. Uh, if I just keep my cursor up here, you'll see at the bottom there that the volume continues to dry up and then we get that a little breakout and a movement again. So basically it's like the market dying off and we need to shake it, get it moving again and that's where this blood comes into the market and it, it moves one way or the other. So you can see that happening right now. See the, the volume just starting to dry up. We had some blood shocks to the market and just couldn't do anything to it. We had another blood shock here and it's just started to dry up again. So in order for this to go back to new all-time highs, we would need to see massive volume and a big solid bar breaking through some highs. That's going to be the way that we kickstart the market. The momentum is in the direction of the downside. All right, so it's not FUD. It's none of this sort of stuff. This is what is on the chart. If you want to scream FUD, go and scream it at your chart. Get your text tool out and just write FUD on the chart and that might make you feel a little bit better. But apart from that, this is just what the market is doing. All right, so we're just seeing volume dry up. What's happened in the past? In the past, I'm just seeing here, we've got about 10 weeks. So this little number in a W is... 10 weeks of a sideways and volume drying up. Then we got a lifeblood kick, went sideways again, and we dropped off. So we could get them in any sort of uh, amounts, but essentially what I'm seeing on the chart is around this six weeks as a shortest period to around 15 weeks. So that's some of the longest periods there. Having a look at this low, a lot of energy dropped into the market and then we went sideways, broke out. 12 weeks top to a low volume and then a final break. This is one of the most classic ones we had at the end of the 2018 
uh, bear market as we started to move into a accumulation zone. This would have been like a final redistribution, possibly some distribution going on up here and then obviously selling on the way up. Just a little note on the selling, taking profits. There are people taking profits on the way up here. You can see that the volume is still high, this bar, this bar. Just remember that people can be taking profits well and truly before the all-time high. The beauty in cryptocurrency is that we get massive drawdowns, massive drawdowns. People find that quite scary, but it kind of gives you a second chance. If you sold out too early at like nine or $11,000, if you have patience, the market will probably come back to that point and, and some <laughs> and a lot more. And so you might feel like an absolute fool for a month selling out too early, but uh, at the end of the day, the market generally comes right back and we're potentially seeing that at the moment on Bitcoin. So I've got 15 weeks here, 14 weeks. Next thing I've got are these arrows. Uh, what happened after this market dried up? We're in a downtrend, market dried up, we fell. All right, then we had a change in trend. We had a, an accumulation begin and we had higher lows start to form. Whereas here we had high, uh, lower highs. You can see lower high, lower high, lower high, and we had to break down. Whereas at this point, we begun to get, uh, began to get a, a higher low. So the support, the, the whales are coming in to buy the market and hold it up. Then we had a little push through and we didn't see the market fall back. So we knew that there were buyers coming into the market and the selling had dried up. And so they're just testing, 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 big breakout here in April and off we went. So we had a reversal at this point and away we went. Got to a top, market started to dry up again and we fell. We tried again and we fell. We had a reversal here, but then it led to a drop. So from that point, it's it's. I'm looking at this like we can't definitively say that the market will always go up or down from one of these points. We get an up and then get a down. The main thing that we can say is that when the volatility decreases, we're going to get some sort of uh, blow off move in either direction. And maybe we even come back the opposite way again. Something like a low reversal, like a reversal in the market. Uh, shows that the market is about to go up and probably up for some time. Um, so what the, the other main thing that I want to look at here and that we can definitively say is this market has put in around six weeks, but mostly around this sort of 10 to 14-ish weeks. We're currently sitting at around seven weeks. So if we happen to get the lower side, then it's probably likely going to happen sooner rather than later. If we're going to get the upper end of our uh, sideways accumulation distribution periods, then it's probably going to take another few weeks. Let's go a little further back looking at 2013, 14, 15 and 16 and we can see that we had longer periods. Now I know I've just spent a whole part of the video talking about short periods between 6 and 14 or so weeks but this is a different section of the market. This is the market accumulating into uh, the early stages of a bull market and this is completely different to what we're currently in now. We've seen a major stage of a bull market play out. Uh, and so I'm thinking with something like this area here, because this is a bull market playing out, then a restful period, and then a move again. And so I can see this 23, 24 week period being broken up into two sections. So we could break up these sections as well, these 20 periods. So this is just something to think about moving forward. Should we get another 20 week period thereabouts, then we could look to break it up, but we want to see major volume and the market stopping and reversing. That's the difference in these accumulation zones. So we have a potential uh, distribution zone as we fall into this low and then an accumulation again because the market couldn't get any further down. So 11 weeks of this move across, we got big volume, big drop down, sideways, volume drying up, dump into that final low, big volume, Reversal, that's a very good sign. And this is on a macro chart. Remember, we're not looking at minutes, hourlies, not even dailies at this point. We're looking at weekly charts. So it's a bigger move. Something bigger will happen from a move like this. You're not going to get big moves happening from an hourly chart or a four-hour chart or a 12-hour chart, any of that sort of stuff that you'll see online. Those will only produce smaller, shorter moves. We want big moves, all right? So we're looking at this here. We're getting an accumulation. We're getting more volume come in. Watch that volume dry up again. We had a dump down to take out some of these stops and then a quick reversal. So the market always tries to fool us, but if we can keep on top of it and just note around this sort of time frame, we could expect a move. 
and then keep with the market as we see it dump, reverse, which you'd see in the week, and then look to make new highs. It broke out again, big volume, away we went. Now, I wouldn't blame you if you thought this was a little confusing. On one end, we had a down, then we had an up, then we had a down. It's just to take note that we don't always do something. We don't always go down and stay down. And I just wanted to bring that up because it, for new investors anyway, I think that it is often noted that we have to do something. The market has to do a certain thing and you have to commit to a certain direction. But you need to be flexible in these markets. As the market shows us, we go up and we go down and sideways. We get that. You, it's very difficult to trade on that point. But if we can see major turns come in, that's going to give us an edge. We layer that with a plan of when we want to buy, have patience. Then that sets us up to have uh, a much better return than just buying at any time or dollar cost averaging into the market at any point, like through 40, 50, 60,000 dollar Bitcoin. This is basically like a roadmap setting us up for the next six or so months. Layer this, as I said, with a uh, entry plan and then layer it with the previous videos I've put out on the channel looking at potential turns in the market, major turns on a monthly basis, on a monthly time frame. So check all of this out. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel, bell notification icon, share this content with friends, family, someone who's trying to get into crypto, has no idea where to start. This will give you a bit of a roadmap and just help you with those new investor emotions, uh, especially at these times where the market is boring and you just feel like you have to be buying something. That's not necessarily the case. We've been now several weeks from that major top to that low, that's 10 weeks already and we're currently about 13 weeks into this bearish period of the market. And so if we're just waiting out, waiting out, we don't need to be uh, waiting to buy something so quickly. We just need to wait for the right signals and I hope these sorts of charts will help you understand where those signals could come. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. It's free, comes out once every two weeks, full of crypto, investing news, stock markets, property markets. We look at the investment space holistically as we've been doing for the last 15 years. So make sure you go and check that out. Drop your name, email address, absolutely free. Link to that down below. Join me on Twitter for your daily crypto updates. And we're looking at charts and plans. Instagram for your daily Q&As. All right, so make sure you're over there as well and you've liked the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys at the next video. Stay around to the end of this. You'll see more videos pop up which will be very helpful for your investment journeys. Catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.